The early Cretaceous of China, a place full of dinosaurs, birds, and many other small creatures. In this often chilly forest, many small feathered creatures scuttle, climb, or fly amongst the trees, but one of the oddest feathered residents is also its largest predator. Resting through the morning sunrise are a trio of Eutyrannus. These early tyrannosaurs can grow up to 9 meters long and weigh over a ton. These three, however, have a ways to go before they reach their full size, but at 5 meters, they are still very dangerous. The small group are actually brothers, who only recently left their mother's care to fend for themselves. Though female Eutyrannus live solitary lives, except when raising young, male Eutyrannus will form small groups known as coalitions, usually made up of brothers. They lay close to one another to preserve body heat. They may be covered in feathers, but in winter the temperature can get below zero, and they have to take extra precautions. Eutyrannus are also the largest dinosaur known to have feathers, or at least significant amounts of them. These large predators have kept their insulative plumage in order to keep warm in their cold home that averages at 10 degrees. As the sun rises, the brothers begin to wake up, yawning and stretching out their limbs, ready for a day of hunting. When they were young, their mother hunted for them, and when they grew old enough, they hunted alongside her. But now that they are on their own, they are having to learn to coordinate without her guidance. The smallest of the siblings is the first to get up to his feet, and groggily looks around the area. It rained last night, so the foliage is still wet. As the other two Eutyrannus squirm on the ground, wanting nothing more than to go right back to sleep, the youngest spots something despite his still blurry vision. Moving between the trees is a flock of Codipteryx, small flightless oviraptors, less than a meter long, Standing on long legs and covered in feathers, these omnivorous dinosaurs spend most of their days pecking at the forest floor, feeding on everything from seeds to insects. They are also a favorite meal of young Eutyrannus. Though the three siblings have mostly outgrown such small prey, it doesn't mean they have forgotten how good they taste. The youngest brother can't restrain himself, and before his packmates can even stand, he has bolted forward eager for breakfast. He didn't attack from a hidden position, however, and the Codipteryx see him instantly, all let out a series of gobbles and squawks in alarm, and the group bolts in all directions. The young Eutyrannus' head darts back and forth, trying to pick out a target in the commotion. His eyes keep switching between the multicolored turkey-sized creatures, and he almost comes to a dead stop in front of the zigzagging group, until they disperse enough, and he targets one, running towards a low-lying shrub. The Codipteryx is fast on its feet, but can't outpace the giant following him. He can, however, outmaneuver him. The Eutyrannus bites at his target, but the small dinosaur jumps out the way. Predator tries again, but misses. On the third lunge, he gets close, but chomps on nothing but air. The Codipteryx runs around the tree, forcing the hunter to wind around them. If he can keep it up, he may be able to exhaust the Eutyrannus. Unfortunately for the rest of the flock, the other two brothers have joined in on the hunt, and were also snapping at the fleeing Codipteryx, who now acted like a group of headless chickens. The smallest brother was having trouble timing his strikes, and just couldn't get a hold of the slippery morsel. His target rounded a group of trees, and he followed it, but as he did, he saw too late that his largest sibling was running straight for him, as he was also chasing one of the Codipteryx. The two smaller dinosaurs passed right by each other. The brothers, on the other hand, couldn't react in time, and headbutted each other. The tops of their heads slammed against each other with an ungraceful thud. Both reeled backwards, groaning in dazed confusion, and the smaller of the two slipped and fell to the ground. Seemingly having escaped his pursuers, the Codipteryx continued to run, but was too slow to avoid the jaws of the third Eutyrannus. The carnival swept in from the side with his mouth slightly open, and as his target ran by, he just managed to grab its tail with the tip of his jaws. He had to get low to the ground to do so, and as he secured his catch, his feet slipped on the wet terrain, and he slid briefly before coming to a stop on his side, one leg up in the air, but the Codipteryx secure. The carnivore held on tight as his prey flailed and clawed at the ground, but the Eutyrannus knew he could take all his time in getting back onto his feet. At least he could have, if his larger sibling hadn't been running behind him, and not stopped running. 
The largest of the Utah runners ran to the back of his prone brother and tripped right over him, tumbling to the ground. The middle brother was kicked and rolled over by his sibling's impact, and in the process, he let go of the Cordipteryx. And as the brothers rolled, the small dinosaur ran to freedom. Thankful these Utyrannus were so clumsy. As the battered brothers got to their feet and realized their breakfast was long gone, they instantly started bickering, barking, snorting, and biting. But at the end, they were too tired to injure each other. Not too far away, their mother was awoken to the sound of her offspring arguing. She sighed and tried to go back to sleep. They weren't her responsibility anymore, and if they wanted to survive, they would have to get along and have to become a team. Hello fellow travelers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the feathered tyrant, Eutyrannus. Eutyrannus' remains consist of three nearly complete skeletons that were acquired from a fossil dealer, who claimed they were from the Lianonin province in China. It was summarized that they belonged to the Yixian Formation, which dates back to the Aptian period of the early Cretaceous, 125 million years ago. It was named Eutyrannus Hueli in 2012, which means Beautiful Feathered Tyrant. In terms of where it fits on the family tree, Eutyrannus has features that are both basal and derived for a Tyrannosaur, but we'll cover that more later. Currently, it is classified as a Proceratosaurid Tyrannosaurid, and is very large for one from the early Cretaceous. Speaking of size, Eutyrannus could grow up to 9 meters long and weigh up to 1.4 tons, with more conservative estimates putting it at 7.5 meters long and 1.1 tons. The three individuals found are each different ages, consisting of an adult, a subadult, and a juvenile. Their skull lengths are calculated to be 90 centimeters for the largest, which is also the holotype, 80 centimeters for the subadult, and 63 centimeters for the juvenile, with each calculated to weigh around 600 kilograms and 490 kilograms. Now let's cover what brought Eutyrannus its fame, those feathers. The fossils found were so well preserved in places that there are even impressions left by feathers on them. These were located on the tail, pelvis, near the foot, on the neck, and on the arms, the longest of which were on the neck and grew to 20 centimeters in length. Since they have been found in multiple parts of the body, it is likely Eutyrannus was covered in feathers. These feathers were filamentous, so not what we see in modern birds, which are called flight feathers. They are closer to downy feathers as seen on young birds and were likely used for insulation, but could have been for display secondarily. This makes Eutyrannus not only the largest known feathered dinosaur, but the largest known feathered animal, being 40 times the size of the second largest known feathered dinosaur, the 2.5 meter long Therizinosaur, by Iposaurus. So why does it have such a vast covering of feathers? After all, an animal of that size should be producing enough body heat that feathers may become a detriment, right? To answer that, we have to look at the environment it lived in. 125 million years ago, China was covered in a temperate forest with large lakes and even frequent volcanic activity. There would have been plenty of vegetation and large amounts of rainfall. However, the average temperature would have been around 10 degrees. It may have even snowed in the winter. This low temperature explains that as Eutyrannus evolved into its large size, it kept its insulative feathers even as an adult, in order to keep warm in its cold environment. And like some modern cold adapted species, it may have grown a thicker coat for the winter and shed to a lighter coat for the summer. With clear evidence of feathers present in a large theropod, does this mean other large predatory dinosaurs also had them? Like Eutyrannus' distant descendant, Tyrannosaurus rex? The quick answer is not likely. On large species that have preserved skin impressions, like T. rex, no evidence for feathers has been found, and in species that lived in warm environments, it's likely that larger animals lost their feathers as they would have caused them to overheat. Some that lived in colder environments may have kept the covering of downy feathers for insulation, such as Nanooksaurus from Alaska, and it's entirely likely that different species had a small amount of display feathers on, say, the arms or neck, including more quill-like structures. With feathers out of the way, let's look at the rest of the animal. As said earlier, Eutyrannus has traits of both its Proceratosaurid ancestors and its Tyrannosaurid descendants. Its body overall is built for speed, with long legs and a narrow skull. Its forearms were long and had three long fingers, each with a long claw that would have been effective for grabbing onto prey. 
Since we have three individuals at different stages of growth, we can see how these animals changed as they grew. As they aged, U. Tyrannus's arms and legs became shorter, while their skulls grew proportionally larger, hinting that as adults they were hunting larger animals, which led them to using their jaws over their arms. Compared to later Tyrannosaurs, U. Tyrannus's skull was narrow and more lightly built. Its teeth were also thinner and blade-like, so it was not built to crush bone like T. rex. Its teeth and jaws were better suited for cutting clean through flesh and muscle, making it similar to Allosaurs or Cacarodontids. With that being said, U. Tyrannus's skull was also deep and had powerful muscles along the jaws and connecting to the neck, and as a result, had a shorter neck than Proceratosaurids. On top of the jaws, U. Tyrannus had a prominent crest formed from the nasals and the premaxillae, which is another holdover from Proratosaurids, some of which had massive nasal crests. In life, it was likely covered in keratin and probably grew out as the animal aged. U. Tyrannus also had small horns over its eyes, which along with its crest would have been used as a visual display, likely to attract mates. U. Tyrannus got very large for an early Tyrannosaurid, in fact, large members of this family don't really start appearing till the last 20 million years of the Cretaceous. But Eutyrannus was a massive exception, becoming larger in size, yet still built for high speed, and packing deadly new weaponry that its descendants would evolve upon. The three specimens being found together has raised the question of whether or not this was a family group, or if Eutyrannus could hunt in packs. Other large theropods, such as Mapusaurus and Dusbletosaurus, have been found in similar groups. Evidence that pack behavior was more likely than one might think. They may have worked together to more efficiently run down small prey, or bring down large prey like sauropods that they couldn't on their own. So what other animals were living alongside you, Tyrannus? Well, the Yixian formation is known for its incredibly well-preserved fossils, especially of small animals. When it comes to fossils, the reason we seem to have so many large animals is because smaller creatures' bones are more fragile and less likely to remain intact long enough to fossilize. The Ixian formation, however, has many fossils ranging from small dinosaurs, birds, mammals, fish, and even insects. In fact, large dinosaur remains are quite rare, but this makes sense, as just like today, in terms of numbers, there would have been far less large animals than small ones. This has been put down to two factors. One being the deep lakes that dotted the area would have been low in oxygen at the bottom, and when an animal fell into the water, they would sink to the bottom and deteriorate slowly, allowing a better chance of fossilizing. Second is a large amount of volcanic activity may have on occasion covered the land in ash and dust, also helping with preservation. Some dinosaurs that inhabited this area include Pistosaurus, an early ceratopsian, Dongbei Titan, a sauropod, Cynoceropteryx, a small feathered consignathid, and Cordypteryx, an early oviraptorid. Eutyrannus is an extremely important find in paleontology. It not only cements the connection between dinosaurs and birds, it fills in some gaps on Tyrannosaur evolution, not to mention the luck of having three individuals of different age groups to show how the species developed over time. But what do you think of Eutyrannus? And for my question of the week, how extensive do you think Eutyrannus' feathers were? Was it a light covering that you could see the skin through, or a thick coat of shaggy down? Let me know what lesser known dinosaur you'd like me to do a breakdown on next, and until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.